You guys should be fucking lucky that you guys have a game that's being supported by the developers. I know you guys really haven't been there, Tekken players, but there is a such thing as your game just getting shit canned and just not coming out ever again, or at least feeling like it's not. Hey, yo, what's going on, guys? It's your boy, Emery Reigns here, and I wanted to make a kind of a brief video, but kind of um, extensive, just talking about what I think about the current state of Tekken 8. A couple of different topics that I feel are kind of important to talk about right now. The FGC in general, especially when it comes to Tekken 8. As you guys know, Tekken 8 did just drop, and it's a really sick game. I'm really enjoying it. A lot of different things that I believe are wrong with the game from a balance standpoint, but that's going to be any fighting game that comes out. You know, None of these fighting games that are coming out are going to be perfect to people, and there's always going to be someone that's going to bitch and complain about something. As you guys know, in DOA 6, I was a very big hater of the game because I just hated how it felt like they took everything that made being a solid DOA player and just threw it out the fucking window. I think that they kind of did that with DOA 6. However, I feel like I was kind of harsh on the game, and it was only because I was a really big fan and a competitor and a supporter and a commentator of the game. You know, it was an interesting time to be a DOA player, but um, I'm starting to see some of these same things in the Tekken community when it comes to Tekken 8 and how a lot of people feel about the game. It seems as if a lot of people are just avoiding being honest about the game because they're such fucking diehard Tekken dick riders. There's blatant issues with this game, including the balancing. There's no reason why there's five characters in the game that you literally don't even have to think with and then you have to try with the rest of the cast for the most part. But it's still fun nonetheless. These games are supposed to be fun. It is hard to kind of, you know, have fun with the game, especially when there's a lot of money on the line for a lot of these players, and I can understand a lot of their complaints about it. You guys should be fucking lucky that you guys have a game that's being supported by the developers. I know you guys really haven't been there, Tekken players, but there is a such thing as your game just getting shit canned and just not coming out ever again, or at least feeling like it's not. So I think you guys should be a little more fucking grateful. And again, I'm saying this as a person who, even though I couldn't stand DOA 6, I definitely you know, could have been more grateful for the game, especially, you know, being a diehard supporter of the game and Team Ninja, you know, doing their best to support me as a content creator. But I definitely don't want to confuse that with my true feelings about the game. And I feel like the problem is, is that when it comes to being honest about a game, that's fine. But I also think that there's a line of being honest and also just of being appreciative of what you have at the very least. And I feel like I didn't do a really good job with that with DOA 6. So, you know, shout out to DOA, of course, and hopefully one day it comes back. But I can't stand that dragon off literally is doing five fucking moves and you have to literally guess between what he's gonna do and tekken not to say it's never really been a big guessy game but dragon off is one of the only characters in this game that makes me feel like i'm playing another realm game like there is no skill required with using a character i don't care what you guys say i've been playing fighting games long enough dragon off needs to be nerfed there's a couple of other things in the game that need to be changed, but dragging off 100%, something needs to be done about the fucking character. He's completely unbalanced, and it's not okay how you can just pick this character and not have to know how to move or punish or anything, and you can just beat people with five moves. It's ridiculous, but that's the way they chose to balance the game, and it's not going to stop me from playing it. I can bitch about it all I want, but it's not going to stop me from playing it. Namco is dropping the ball when it comes to changing the right stuff about the game. Um... The plugging is ridiculous. And for those that don't know what plugging is, it's these motherfuckers that are literally turning their game off so that way you're losing your win streak for beating their ass and they can get back on with no repercussions. I'm seeing that they are banning some people and getting rid of some people. However, I'm noticing it's really only the big content creators that are doing it and that's not enough. Like, I feel like in 2024, if you can implement a fucking in-game store and put the game out of service for hours, there's no way you're going to tell me that there's not something more you can do about these fucking cheaters and pluggers in the game. For example, you've got this fucking loser right here, Ulrich, or whatever the fuck his name is. This dude is blatantly, let me show you his fucking face so you can see him. This guy is blatantly using a in-game screenshot where if you do it it's gonna lag the entire matchup he's blatantly doing it live on stream to the point where he really doesn't give a fuck at all and it's clear and this guy's been around for some time from what i understand now i'm a little more newer to the Tekken community and his players but this dude's been doing this forever from what i understand like kind of doing shit like this um and he's to the point where this guy's bragging about it on on like twitter making videos and shit and I don't know if this guy thinks he's fucking low tier God or whoever the fuck he thinks he is, but you're a fucking nobody. Um, and the only reason why I'm even going as far as to say that is because you're literally blatantly cheating. You're okay with cheating. Like, 
And the fact that this dude is still logging into the game and logging into the servers and nothing has been done. You know, listen, I know Tekken's a big fucking game, but it's not Call of Duty. When you get these complaints and they're getting thousands of likes on Twitter, I don't get how Namco is not addressing this stuff right away. Like, this dude should have been terminated a long time ago. So let me show you guys what the fuck he's doing, okay, if you guys did not see this shit yet. But he's literally blatantly... Look at this shit. Did you see how he got launched and he switched up and started screenshotting? Do you see this? Don't care. Don't care. Bro. <laughs> like, bro, this is, this is like so cringy to me. This is cringe. Like, you know how you guys, these little, the younger guys are saying cringe? This is fucking cringe. Do you see his face? Something needs to be done about this fucking loser, okay? I'm not going to spend too much time talking about this guy. If you guys haven't seen it, his name is Olrek.tv on Tekken. And you guys can look him up on Twitter. He's blatantly bragging about cheating and fucking people's experience up. And he, he literally blatantly does not care. So hopefully something is done about these fucking losers and these cheaters and pluggers. Because it is making the game unplayable. There's no reason why I have to avoid an entire game mode. I gotta avoid an entire game mode because of fucking losers like this. So please, for crying out loud, stop updating the game with fucking Uniqlo t-shirts and fix this shit, please, okay? Another thing I wanted to talk about really quick is this Tekken Battle Pass. While I'm not in agreement with like microtransaction -y stuff or whatever, I think that there's bigger fish to fry and I think the community needs to shift their focus on other stuff. Again, people are always gonna find something to bitch about. And I know I'm going to get comments on this video saying, oh, well, you know, I, I disagree with this take and blah, blah, blah. Of course you do. Most of you guys do. But do you want the game to be good? Okay. Do you want them to keep having funds to update this game and make it good? You don't have to buy the fucking battle pass. Okay. I need to make that clear. And I know this is going to hurt some people's feelings. And I'm probably the last person on earth you thought would ever agree with this. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying I really agree with the battle pass thing. I'm not going to buy it just because I really could care less about some cosmetic items. There's already in-game customization that came with the game. I know it's not the greatest. Oh, it's nowhere near as good as Tekken 6. Boo fucking who, okay? They're not just going to put out all this content for fucking free, guys. It's 2024. They have a Battle Pass and Call of Duty, Gears of War, every game you can think about, every shooter that comes out. You think it's stopping people from playing Call of Duty because they have a battle pass? No. You think that Activision or whoever the fuck is making Call of Duty now gives a fuck that, that 10 people are going to stop playing the game? None of you guys are going to stop playing. Can we call it like it is? You can sit on here and bitch and whine all you want. You're either going to buy it or you're not. It's really that simple. You don't have to buy the battle pass, okay? It's not mandatory. I can see if they say you cannot continue to progress your rank in the online game if you don't buy the battle pass. Don't fucking buy it. Who fucking cares, bro? It's, it's it's really not that serious. Like, I don't know if you guys think that they're just going to keep throwing out content that takes them time and money to make. And I know you guys heard Harada say that it takes time and money. It's very expensive to do this. Everything is way more enhanced as far as graphics and, and being able to implement this stuff in the game. Support your fucking game or let it die. I really don't understand really what else there is to say about it. In DOA, we had to pay money for hair colors. Something you guys get for completely free. We had to pay for it. And every time we wanted to change the hair color, we had to pay more money. This is not that. Please pick and choose the stuff you're bitching about. Either buy it or don't. Jeez, man. Also, shout outs to Eddie Gordo coming back, okay? Eddie Gordo is a staple in Tekken. He's been around as long as I've been playing the game back in Tekken 3. And where I'm not really a big fan of Eddie Gordo, I really could give a fuck about the character in the sense of I can't stand fighting him because he's one of those evasive Tekken characters that can kind of go under all your shit. And if you don't know the matchup, you're going to get clapped. However, the replay review feature is definitely going to make it easier to learn how to fight Eddie because as you guys know, Eddie's a really unorthodox character. And um, learning how to fight the character in the other Tekken games was, was super difficult, in my opinion, because the way the lab was set up, it was very hard to go in there and figure out what you had to find. Just lose to a couple Eddie players and go and lab the shit. I'm actually excited to see him come back because I can finally learn the matchup effectively. I'm not really going to go too much into the gameplay and the details of that. Um, you guys have probably already seen that, and I really don't have time to balance with you. So, shout out to Eddie Gordo for coming back. That's cool. One of the last things I wanted to touch on in this video was talking about the patch update that they're going to be putting out for Tekken 8. In this patch, you can clearly see that nothing was done to Dragonoff. 
The reason why I'm making a point of this, and other characters did get nerfed, they did change Azu Senna's running 3-2 so you can actually uh, duck the high if the first attack whiffs or something like that. The move is still going to be good, as you guys know. If the move hits you on guard, um, it's, you, you can't duck it. It jails you. But I do think that this is going to alleviate some of the annoyances about the move. The reason why I can't stand moves like Azu Senna's running 3-2 and like a lot of stuff Dragunov's doing... Is because when you have a game as sophisticated as Tekken and as in-depth as Tekken, and you put a character like Azusena in a game who's clearly encouraging people not even having to try. If you're using this character, you know you're getting carried. If you're using Dragon Off, you know you're getting carried, okay? I'm not saying you guys are shit at the game. You guys can probably pick any character in the game and be good at it if you're, you know, in the higher ranks or whatever. Maybe not. You guys are probably fucking ass, but... If you're using Azucena before this update comes out, at the very least, you are definitely carried. I don't care what anybody says. Going down, looking at some of the other problem characters in the game, specifically, specifically Dragonoff. As you can see, they made it look like they're nerfing the character by putting these little down arrows on here. I want to make it clear. Nothing that they change with Dragonoff is changing what he's doing. They're making little changes to make it look like they're doing something. As long as Dragonoff has down back 3 plus 4, back 1 plus 2, running 2, and as long as his fucking uh, heat smash is turning around and fucking running across the map and shit, the character is going to be the way he is. He also has a throw game. He's got down 2. He's got a bunch of silly fucking shit. The thing about Tekken characters I want to make clear here is that they're only one move away from becoming really good and broken, or actually moderately good and broken. For example, a lot of people complain about Leroy in this game. Imagine if Leroy was a little bit stronger than he was. I get it that a lot of people are complaining because Leroy is not as good as he was in Tekken 7. But imagine he just got one more change to throw him over the top. That's really the difference I feel like between like Tekken and other games. Is that some of these characters are literally one move away from becoming busted. For example, imagine Leroy had like a Lars down forward one. So, again, you know, I'm pretty happy with Tekken 8 right now. I'm not really playing it as much as I was. Like I said, I've been really busy with life. I haven't played in five days at this point. But I'm still enjoying it for what it is and whenever I get a chance to play. Um, and I'm probably going to find myself finding less and less time to play fighting games because I'm getting really busy with life stuff. Um, but I'm always going to play. I'm always going to tap in and make new videos and content for you guys whenever I can. And once again, I appreciate you guys' support all throughout the years. It's been a blessing to be able to sit here and still create content. I'm 29 years old. Getting a little old here, man. I'm turning to an old man. But, you know, it's been an interesting journey and I have built up a pretty decent following. Um, in fighting games and just content creation in general so i really appreciate you guys support throughout all these years and i hope we continue to grow even though we might be growing at a little bit of a slower rate we did reach 30,000 subscribers so i appreciate you guys so much for that it was really hard to get to that point i've been doing this youtube shit since 2009 sadly it's kind of embarrassing that i've only hit 30,000 subscribers after doing this shit for fucking you know 14 years you know what i mean but at the end of the day um, you know, I'm really grateful for where we are and it's about creating a community. It's about finding people that support you for you being you and um, That's good enough for me, man. You know what I mean? So I'm really grateful for where we are Hope you guys continue to strive to be better in your lives whether it's through content creation as parents um, Whether it's getting in the gym and getting gains or whether it's tackling whatever you guys got going on in life And even though this is unrelated to the video, um, I thought it would be cool for me to give you guys some words of encouragement I guess you could say you know, I get hit up by a lot of people on Twitter and other social media platforms telling me the shit that they're going through is rough. And, you know, they see that I've been through a lot of stuff in my life. As you guys know, I lost my mom and son. Got into a really bad crash back in February um, of last year. So it's been a lot of recovering and recuperating. For a while there, I found myself not really wanting to be a content creator anymore. But, you know, I still keep pushing forward. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you got to you got to do what makes you you if you want to continue to be you, if that makes any sense to you guys. So, you know, don't give up no matter what you're going through. You can go through the hardest shit in life and still find a way to make a comeback. And that, you know, goes for anything in life. So thank you guys for the support. Much love to you guys. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Stay blessed. Stay loved. And I'll see you all soon, man.